Hello, welcome to People in Perspective. My name is John Bielabradek. My, my guest here is Nick Santos, an entrepreneur in the Riverside Brookfield area. Welcome, Nick. Thanks, John. All right, Nick, so let's get started. Tell me a little bit about your life in like Riverside Brookfield since you attended this school in high school. All right, um, so I attended Riverside Brookfield. I graduated in the year 2000, right. um, so long time ago. Yeah. Uh, I didn't start my freshman year here, but I came over sophomore year um, mm -hmm. and ended my uh, sophomore, junior, obviously senior year. Um, played a handful of sports. Uh, my experience at RB was great. You know, yeah. it's a great school. Um, made some really great friends who I'm still close with today. That's good. Um, still work with, still coach with, you know, a handful of them. So I, I can't say enough great things about this school, the community in general. Um, right. It's an amazing place. So tell me, like, what were your favorite classes or teachers? So, handful, wow, you put me on the spot here. Uh, it, a teacher that sticks out to me would be um, Mrs. Cassens. Yeah. Um, and I think she actually may still be here. She was my English teacher uh, when I transferred over sophomore year. Um, she was, you know, just that teacher that, you know, welcomed everybody. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, whether you did the assignment the night before or you were f struggling a little bit, she was always down to help you. Um, you know, she really went above and beyond what a teacher needs to do to try and, you know, get kids, you know, up to speed, so yeah. to speak. So, um, yeah, so uh, to answer your question, I would have to say probably Mrs. Cassens. Do you know if she still, like, teaches here? I think so. Um, I'm, I'm pretty sure she does, but I'm, I'm not 100% sure. All right, well, so you said you transferred here sophomore year. Mm -hmm. So where did you go freshman? Uh, so freshman year, I started uh, at Fenwick. Fenwick. So, so. Uh, went there, um, I'm getting some shakes from the cameraman back there. But no, uh, I started, started out there, um, but when it came down to it, all my boys went to RB. So, yeah. you know, all the, kid, all the guys that I played football growing, growing up with, uh, basketball, things like that, I ended up transferring over. Um, so that was just sort of the decision that myself and my parents made um, to just, you know, come back to, to Riverside Brookfield. So. All right. Well, yeah, that makes sense. So you, you graduated. Where did you go to college? Uh, so I started my college career at Triton Junior College. So I went there for two years, knocked my gen eds out of the way, and then I actually went over to uh, Eastern Illinois. So it's a really? down, little down south, uh, like 45 minutes south of like U of I, it's in Charleston. Yeah. Um, so I went there, um, I had, once again, I had a few buddies that I ended up going to college with. Um, mm -hmm. So it was, you know, a great experience at, at both schools. You know, Triton was great because it still allowed me to stay near my house because I wasn't ready to leave just yet. Yeah. Um, but with that being said, after the two years, I was like, all right, I need to get out and about and, you know, try something new. All right. So after college, did you already know, like, what type of career path you were going to? Or did you just happen to fall into what you're doing? So with when I ended up gradu graduating, getting my bachelor's, um, I had been working at uh, a distributorship called Southern Glaciers. Actually, at, yeah, Southern Glaciers. Mm -hmm. um, I started in the warehouse. I was working okay. graveyard shift, which is basically like 6 p.m. until like 6 a.m. So yeah, no, tough hours. Yeah, yeah, rough in the streets, man. Yeah. It was it was not easy to do, but um, I did that and then worked my way up into sales. And now I still work for that company um, 17 years later. Wow. So yeah, so, so it's it's, it's nice been, long career. Yeah, it's been quite quite the ride, quite the journey with them. So now I actually I'm in sales. Um, I have a route in the city of Chicago in the River North neighborhood and Gold mm. Coast neighborhood. So it's uh, it's been like I said a, a journey, a long journey, but it's a great great company to work for. Um, so I have nothing but great things to say about my experience so far there. That's amazing. Yeah. So. If you had like to take back any choices in your life, like high school, college, career, is there anything that you would change? I mean, yes and no. You know, there's a lot of things looking back at my time, you know, at RB or Fenwick or in college, wherever, I, wherever it may be, 
there's a, a million things that I would do different. Yeah. You know, one thing I, if I would do different, I, I, and I constantly tell Jaden this and, and my other kids is, and, and even the kids I coach, study, pay attention in class. You yeah. know, like, Jeez. you know, when I, I hear the things like, well, what am I gonna use this for? It's like, you, you're gonna use it at some point in your life. You mm -hmm. know, just, just if, if I can go back in time, I would have paid attention in class and listened to what my teachers were trying to tell me. And, and, and to be honest, and my parents too, it just makes life easier. So now that I'm at that age, so I, I get mm -hmm. it. Yeah. So. so going off on coaching, cause you just brought it up. How, how did that feel? Like, how was it to coach me and your son and obviously some of his other friends? How was that? I mean, amazing. I mean, honestly, like myself, Coach Evans, Coach Mike, people that I've coached with in the past, it's like, it, it was by far one of the best experiences that I've had. I mean, it's something that we would wake up in the morning looking forward to game planning for whoever we had that week. And then we would, you know, be texting at night saying like, can't wait for this, you know, like we're ready, you know, and, and just coaching, you know, the boys that obviously are, are great friends with my son, the kids that I see, you know, walking around the block, you know, right. like just like stuff like that. I, it, it felt like we were truly a family. Yeah. You know, there's, there's memories that I'll take with me and I hope that all the kids that, you know, we played with will take with them also. Yeah, so for sure. Yeah. So the, the main point, the reason we brought you in here is to tell us a little bit about your business that you're starting. So can you tell me about that? Yeah, for sure. So um, myself, uh, Coach Mike J, and then Coach Emo DiBartolo are starting a youth training program. So we right. we're opening up. We're actually in the middle of opening up a youth training facility in mm -hmm. North Riverside. Okay. So you know, with that being said, we're trying to bring this to the community that we, I mean we grew up in and that we currently still live in. You know, right. this is something that we're building. And, and putting together for you, for kids that are younger for you, for, you know, I have, obviously, you know, Leo, my son has just turned four years old. This is something that I want to stay in the community for the next 15, 20 years, or for however long people allow us to stay here. Right, and what's the name of the business that you're starting? So it's Hustle Hard Athletics. Hustle Hard Athletics. So right. we've been doing um, youth training, uh, I mean, you obviously know this is something yeah. that we've been doing for years. Yeah. We just yeah. haven't been doing it, you know, professionally and taking it to that next level, exactly. you know? So with that being said, this is something that when you, Jaden, kids like Andres, you know, they all moved on. It's like, we weren't ready to stop coaching. We weren't right. ready to stop training and not it's saying that you guys don't need us anymore. You need us on a smaller scale. Yeah. So. All right, so last question. How do you promote your business? Like, how do you get it around to people? Uh, so, I mean, there's a few different ways. So we're, we're really in the beginning stages of the startup, but the biggest way and, and, and cost-effective way is social media. Okay. You know, anybody can make a, 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 an Instagram handle, a Facebook page, um, TikTok, whatever it is, mm -hmm. and promote, you know, like posting yeah. the videos, things that we've done. You know, I used to post videos of our um, Riverside Brookfield Swarm flag team. Right. You know, and, and the amount of people that it reaches is endless. I would look and I'd see comments and I'm like, wait, how does this have 5,000, you know, likes yeah. or hearts or whatever it is? So, I mean, obviously I'm a little old for social media, but still that's my best way to get, get our, our word out there. And then also just word of mouth too. You okay. know, we're, we're a, a tight knit community in North Riverside and Riverside um, and Brookfield. And I feel like a handful of the parents and kids, it, when they talk, it, it just spreads like wildfire. All right. So. Well, thank you so much for joining me, Nick. It was great learning about your business. I'm John Bielobrodek. This is People in Perspective. We'll see you in the next one.